asked to be with you today. I, my background is uh, not technical. I had uh, six years of Latin years ago when I should have been taking chemistry and physics, but so be it. Um, I want to put one basic distinction in front of you in hopes that people will always understand that when they're dealing with the country's security and major systems, they cannot look just at naturally occurring or naturally caused events. Terrorists are smarter than tree branches. We had tree branches knock down two transformers during the storms a few months ago at our farm near Annapolis. Had that been planned, it could well have taken out the electricity for a huge area of eastern Maryland. As it was, it was 25 homes on a country road. Transformers were relatively small. They were available. took a few days. 20, 25 cherry pickers, 20, 25 uh, uh, utility uh, engineers, work people, know, knew the systems from Arkansas, actually, and we put it back together again. It can have a bigger reason, the electric grid that is, our electric, electricity system, can have a bigger reason to go down. Some uh, time back, I believe in 03, a tree branch, tree branches are quite sneaky things, touched a power line uh, in Cleveland, and after several hours of hacking around and confusion, some 80 gigawatts went offline in 40 seconds, taking uh, out electricity for some 50 million people in the U.S. Uh, and Canada, many of those parts of the U.S. and Canada out of electricity for well over a week. Um, we tried to adopt a rather familiar tactic, at least to those of you who have children or grandchildren who watch South Park, uh, namely to blame Canada. But in their polite way, our Canadian friends pointed out to us that uh, actually Cleveland is south of Lake Erie, not north. And it was our power line and our transformer that went down and our tree branch. Uh, tree branches touching transformers is what uh, I call a malignant problem. Malignant problems can sometimes be relatively small, although naturally occurring. Uh, not only malignancy in the sense of cancer, but let's say ease of taking a system down because of its complexity, butterfly effect. Butterfly flutters his wings on one side of the globe, cascading change as a result of the complicated interaction of systems, tornado on the other side of the, of the world. Uh, but malignant problems, however difficult they may be, and our electricity grid is, is highly, highly uh, susceptible to them. However difficult, however problematical they may be, they are generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, far, far easier to deal with than what I call malevolent problems. Problems in which there is an intelligence on the other side who is trying to decide, figure out how to destroy your systems, or, worst of all, how to kill as many of you as possible. We have an electric grid. I feel like Henny Youngman, the comedian. Take the electricity grid, please. We have an electricity grid whose construction was begun in the late 19th century, and in its own way, it's a marvel, possibly the biggest and most complex machine in the world, and it generally works. But we have only had, as we built our American infrastructure, for electricity. We have only had over the century and a quarter about that we've had something like a grid. We've only had a very brief period of time uh, just before and just, just after actually Pearl Harbor when we were worried with, because of Japanese and German submarines off the east and west coast, we were worried about some type of intentional disruption or attack on American infrastructure. Our whole infrastructure was really put together because of the two oceans that surround us and shield us from many of the world's problems. Our infrastructure was put together without 
on the whole, a single thought being given to intentionally caused harm. Our infrastructure is put together for ease of access, for convenience, for engineering efficiency, but to ha figure out how to design it so that a terrorist can't take down half a dozen of just the right transformers, which he knows about from the web, and thereby take out a substantial share of the country's operations. Nobody was thinking about that when they put the grid together, and nobody generally has thought about those kinds of problems at all. They seem too crazy. They seem too paranoid or something. But electricity has lots of potential enemies. The grid has potential enemies, in a sense, to its smooth operation. I want to touch on just three of them here. There are many experts in this audience who know much more about the engineering issues and the technical issues of this than I do. But first of all, uh, we have physical destruction. If a tree branch falls on a transformer, as it did at the edge of our farm, um, it may break up the transformer, it may need to be replaced, but it doesn't, the tree branch doesn't go after the transformer right at the edge of the National Security Agency or the Pentagon or others that may be so large they have no spares, or if they do have spares, the utility figuring it didn't want to cause the terrorists too much trouble will put the spare transformer right beside the operating transformer. And just to make it clear what you ought to shoot at with your armor-piercing round, um, they put danger, do not touch, every place or some place you should shoot if you're a terrorist. <laughs> the grid is not designed for security against malevolent interference. It is as bad as systems get in that regard. One of the reasons it stays bad and vulnerable is because partially of the utility financing system, which puts a great penalty on any added uh, cost of electricity to consumers. It's partly because of our liability system, in which if you raise these issues with utility executives, and there are ones that have spent some time actually thinking about these issues at all, uh, you, will, uh, you will find uh, that there's there's no real sense of wanting to even talk about these issues, much less write anything about them, because the general counsel has told you that if something bad happens, and there are any emails around, or any mem mem memoranda of uh, record of uh, discussion, could mean big liabilities for the company, so don't talk about it. Don't even think about it. There's a willful blindness about the interest in potentially hostile countries in physical attacks on our grid. One of the big interconnect organizations, I won't name it, a few years ago had a very smart electrical engineer from a large country with a sophisticated military, say that, come to him and say, I'm doing research on electric grids. I wonder if you could let me have the maps of your grid so I can see where all the transformers are and so forth. And the government relations person, the interconnect company, picked up the phone and called the State Department. And the State Department said, sure. He's from this country we want to get along with, so let's be nice to him. So he spent months verging toward a year going through all of the control systems very thoroughly, taking notes and so forth. And then finally, this issue, somebody worried about it a little bit, and it bobbed up to the top of one of our national regulatory commissions. And there was a call to this gentleman from the foreign country, and the regulatory commission individual said, well, we understand you've been working on this for months and months, and we're interested, we'd like to compare notes, we're interested to see what you've been what you've learned and what your notes say. And the gentleman from the foreign country said, sure, absolutely. Um, 
I'll uh, come to Washington the uh, day after tomorrow. He said, fine. And then the next day, he flew back home. The degree of naivete and lack of willingness to put yourself in the shoes of those who would do malevolent harm, it's the only way to do it. Figure out how you could create the biggest problem, then figure out how to defend against it. That whole sequence of thinking that is second nature to people in many parts of our military and the like, as far as I've been able to tell, is almost completely absent in the electric business. Almost totally and completely absent. So, in addition to the malignant problem of a tree branch touching a power line, got to be thinking about the malevolent problem of terrorists or others with, say, physical attacks on the electric grid. And if you don't, you come up with major national debates on things like whether or not to put transmission lines underground. And the only subject being debated is expense and, and so forth. If you say, you know, if you go to the expense of putting them underground and you're not, you're doing something thereby about tree branches, but you're not doing a damn thing, spending a nickel on figuring out how to keep terrorists from taking out transformers or otherwise physically attacking the grid, is this really, shouldn't you have a little broader debate? And you get back basically deer in the headlights. Look. The second way in which we could suffer very serious harm from intentional malevolent interference with the electric uh, grid uh, is, uh, of course, uh, hacking, cyber vulnerabilities. Back in the late 90s, as the web was moving into greater and greater use, and people were intrigued by the low cost of passing information across it, and we were at the same time trying to deal with Y2K, so there was a lot of openness and willingness to think about changing the control systems of things like the utility grid. People had a great idea. Hey, let's save money by putting the SCADA systems, the control systems, for the grid over the web. And then the communication will be cheap, and it'll be easy, and, and what could go wrong? Well, there's one example of the kind of thing that can go wrong with the internet, bless it, which was put together by some individuals who in equal measure were geniuses and are, the ones who are still here, geniuses, but who also um, lack a certain, several of them, a certain sense of suspicion or concern or security, thinking what could go wrong. That chain of thinking has led to some rather substantial difficulties. Uh, take the SIPRNET, which is the secret level internet that has hundreds of thousands of people on it with secret level and below security clearances, but not the very highest security clearances.